Hey, everybody, welcome into this magic room that is called the Zoom Room of Conversation. I don't know what to do. I used to call this 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers, and now we're over 100 Conversations. So then I called it 50 More Conversations. Now I'm just calling it Conversations with Strangers because it just feels like the amount doesn't matter. What's happening is there's something really beautiful that happens in this room. And I think today you're going to be in for a treat. The woman that I'm meeting right now, I know just a very tiny little bit about. I know that she does some work with handwrite, handwriting analysis. And what I love about that whole approach to life and that whole uh, science, really, is that we look at our handwriting and don't think anything about it. We think it's sloppy or it's neat or it's this or that. But when someone knows how to, to, to understand the language of handwriting, the language of how a person writes is mu gives them much more information and gives you yourself much more information. And so I think you're going to love this and I think you're going to want to sign up and I think you're going to want to have a, a, a session with her. Um, we will put all of that information in the show notes because how fascinating to see that the way you write shows you who you are and that by changing the way you write, you can change who you are. So I'm not an expert on handwriting analysis. I'm not even an amateur on handwriting analysis. So why in the heck am I telling you about handwriting analysis when we have somebody who is wonderful at it? So I would like to introduce you and myself to Amya Madam. Is that, did I say your name right, Amya? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And you notice she's holding up her, her microphone because she has to do that because she's, I'm taking it she's sort of tiny because I have the same headphones and I'm big and then I don't need to do that. But maybe I should do that too and my sound would be better too. Amya, welcome to 50, Con well, welcome to Conversations with Strangers. How are you today? I am really good and thank you for having me here. It's my pleasure to be here today. And it's a great, it has been a great day and it's uh, 12.30 here in India. So yeah, it's in a the good evening. night. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I love that about these Indian people that I speak to because they stay up late in order to be able to talk to people where we're 12 and a, we're 12 and a half hours behind you here. Yeah. So yeah. Um, not only could we do handwriting analysis, we could probably bet on the lotto because you already know who won because you're 12 and a half hours ahead of us. No, I'm teasing. Um, tell, tell us with everything that's going on, really how you, like we, we ask, how are you? But we take it for granted and we say, I'm great. But there's a pandemic yeah. going on. There's a civil rights movement going on all around the world. There's a, there's a women's rights movement going on all along the world. I just read in the, in the, in the internet yesterday that India had 83,000 people that contracted yeah. COVID on one day. I yes. mean, that's a lot of people. I mean, India has We have recorded the highest, yeah. And so how are you doing with all that? So it's basically that now with the unlock four that has begun, people are more coming upon the roads. People have become a little liberal when they, when we talk about Corona. So uh, it's a mindset that we have to start all over again. It's been five months. We are all at home and now it's time that we should move on and we should, uh, you know, adjust to this new normal. It's time to pivot to it. The education system, the corporates, the offices, the shops, everyone are trying to pivot to this new normal. And that is what is happening. And that is why people have come out. Probably that's the reason the social distancing concept is, uh, you know, becoming a little less. And that is why the number of cases are increasing yeah. because of the negligent attitude. But we all are hoping for the vaccine to come as soon as possible because it's really difficult. Uh, in this virtual world to connect with people to, you know, actually peer learn the concept that we used to study in the education system yeah. is somewhere missing. There's a lot of screen time that we are spending. No, uh, no doubt that the number of interactions have increased. So I'm meeting uh, you here today. You are thousands of kilometers away. Probably I never knew you. You never know me. But 
we could meet we could talk and that is how the virtual system has transformed but still there is a gap of that human oriented touch that we are all missing all missing and we just, we are just hoping to get the things normal maybe yes it and so how is that affecting you that gap that that lack of human touch that that sense of if i go out now i i have to relax it a little bit because i have to live life we have to get back to whatever our new life whatever this new life is we have to re-envision it but how is that affecting you is it yeah. bringing fear into you is it bringing excitement into you how 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 are you personally feeling with definitely it? not excitement so no excitement about <laughs> it it's been so long we are enclosed in the four walls of the house and so uh it's always a need that you go out, meet your friends, meet your family and relatives. Of course, in India, we have so much of collective culture that we live in, that we feel that need that we should meet more and more people, enjoy the festival. So there have been so many festivals that have gone these five months that we could not meet each other. We could not meet the relatives and all. And that is the fun we are actually missing. And that's what I feel that I have the need to go out to you know relax see the nature see my friends and family and all that stuff so let me ask you and i know this sounds sort of silly silly to ask but i know there are a lot of people that are listening that are feeling that same need yeah what do you feel that need really is and we never even knew that we had that need because we were just doing what we do. We were meeting people, we were going out, we were having fun, we were hugging each other, we were, we were living life, you know, just like we lived. We live. When all yeah. of that's taken away, what, is the, what do you think is the primal need that we all want that we're not getting right now with COVID? I think that need of affection is something we all are missing right now. And uh, all those who are hearing me might connect to it very easily because we all are fear, uh, feeling the same. It's been more than five months that we are away from each other. We are able to see each other through these virtual pa platforms, which are doing wonderful, I must say that. It's a, we are able to at least see each other, but that seeing is not giving us that amount of perfection and that amount of physical connect that we used to feel when we used to live pre-corona times. So as everyone says that post-COVID, things will be entirely different. Yeah. But I feel that once things get to normal, maybe we, uh, that need of us will be fulfilled by that time because then we'll be meeting people. We could actually touch them and feel them and it will no more be seeing the screen all, all the day and the faces keep on changing on that screen. Right. So what do you think, like, do you believe that the world talks to us? Do you believe things happen to for, for a reason? Do you feel like just like we people talk or handwriting speaks to us, that the world itself is speaking to us? Do you believe in that? Uh, if we talk about this time, that the pandemic time that we are going through, then definitely the nature or the earth is speaking. Because you see, there have been so much change in the nature. When Delhi was called the most polluted city, and today we can see the clouds from our balcony. So when wow. we stand on our terrace, we could actually see those beautiful clouds, which we used to, you know, uh, go to foreign countries abroad just to see those beautiful clouds that were wow. not found here. But the roads are more cleaner. There's less pollution. There is more beauty. And there are even birds that have come up, which were never seen before. Yeah. So that is is how the nature has actually reformed itself during this pandemic. People told me that the Ganges, which is the, one of the holiest river, rivers in the world, also the one yeah. of the most polluted rivers in the world, within yes. two weeks time had become 50% less polluted. 50% less polluted was like unheard of by eco ecologists or all that. People were telling yeah. you that they could see the Himalayas from 200 meters of, uh, millimeter, uh, kilometers away, where they yeah, never yeah. could see it before. And you're now saying you can see clouds. So yeah. what do you think the world wants to tell us through this COVID-19? Uh, I feel through this COVID-19, the world has definitely told us that the nature is the most powerful. So with the coming up of new generations and passing of the decades, we as human beings have thought 
that we are the most powerful. We are the ones who are controlling the nature. But now the nature has shown its real form and told us that it is the most powerful. So it has actually made everyone at the same level, be it the president of the country or be it the ordinary farmer. They all are at the same level and they all are following the same rules and norms and they all are going through that same fear. So no matter what, the nature has shown that there is nothing more powerful than that. So let's, do you know what an overhead projector is? Have you ever heard of an overhead projector? Yeah. You know, it's an old image. I'm an old guy. So it's an old image where it's a machine and it has light and then it has a rod that goes yes, up and yes. you put plastic on here and it casts an image on the screen. Yes, yes. So I want to take two plastic sheets of paper, uh, of paper and put them on that overhead projector if I can. One is this need that we all have for the affection and the touch and the human contact. And one is that power of nature that says when you just slow down a little bit and, and be a little more quiet, look what, you can, look, what, look what I'll do if you leave me alone and you stop polluting me. What do you think those things are saying to you personally? Not to the world so, in general, to you, to you individually. This need, this thought of, I want to be with my friends. I want to be out there. I want to be with everybody. Yeah. I want to, I want a family. I want to go to festivals. I want to do, I want to hug. I want to be with everybody. Yeah. And then the other side of that is that in the void of that, nature itself has healed itself. Yeah. What do you think those two things on the overhead projector, that image is showing on the screen in front of us? So that is basically showing the power, okay? So one sheet where the nature is, it's showing more of a power over what our needs is. So our needs have changed due to the nature's powerful forces that it has put on us. And that is how it's the one sheet of nature is overpowering the other of the need we have to meet our friends and families and to enjoy the festivities. Yeah, but we still have the need to have that in intimacy and that connection. I know my daughter is developmentally delayed and she is in a group home about 40 minutes away from me, but I haven't been okay. able to physically go to see her for six months. I see her every day on FaceTime, but now yeah. that's getting a little bit old. And you know, she's, when am I going to come home? When am I able to come home? When do I, when do I, and I can't hold her. I can't hug her. I can't kiss her. I can't walk with her. I can't hold her hand. Yeah, I can't give definitely. her a bath. I can't feed her. You know, I can't do the things that are just so natural to me that I've grown for 30 years doing. Yeah. And on the other hand, I see also a blessing in that when we stop going out so much and go in a little bit, make the world itself would heal itself. So is there a balance message that this is trying to tell us? Is there some, is there, what do you, when you look at it, what do you think the goodness of this COVID-19 is? Uh, one goodness that I could see in myself as well as of others around me is that we all have got to know our hidden potentials. So there were things that we all wanted to do before the time and because of the work pressure, the school pressure, the nine to five jobs, we were probably not able to do and pursue those passions that we all had. So cooking, painting, doodling, drawings, everyone is pursuing their passion they, that they actually wanted to do since so long. So people, most of my friends have started with their YouTube channels. They have actually started displaying their potentials. They have started communicating with people. So those who were educated enough have started their education channels just to share their knowledge. And I myself have started with my website. And this was actually the most productive time of my life when there was a balance of the exams that were going on. And also I could get the enough time that I needed to work on my venture. And therefore, it was the uh, blessing in disguise, as you said, that I was able to start with this venture and to create a website on my own and to reach out to people, even through online mode and help them through their handwriting analysis. I love that. And let's, let's pause for a minute because we just jumped right in. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and what's important to you. 
Okay, so me as a person is a person who is very happy-go-lucky person. So my friends and the people around me call a person who is actually always smiling and laughing. So it's not that I am always happy and I do not have any tensions. It's just that my perspective to looking at those tensions is a little different. Because oh, whenever there is something stressful which is coming, I feel that it's a challenging situation. And therefore, I come up with new and creative ideas to tackle that situation. And not only that, I am a person who loves to explore things, to travel around and to write poetry and uh, doing things that are having a creative touch in it. So it, it is anything, it could be anything that is doodling or painting or even just, uh, you know, looking through the websites as to how they are designed and what different can I do for the people and being a psychology graduate myself. I love to know what people's behavior is and why do they behave in a specific manner and what does that can be changed in them so that there is less of conflicts and more of good and healthy communication styles. Also, uh, I have a lot of interest in uh, cooking. So I try new dishes uh, and this pandemic gave me a time, a lot of free time to actually try cooking. And I have also completed my diploma in French. So it is something wow. which connects me to the French culture as well. And that is what I like. So this is who I am, a uh, who am I as a person. And yeah. I love how respectful you are because everybody that I talk to in the green room before I come on, I talk to them about not talking too much about the work that they do. But I want you to talk now about the work that you do. I want you to talk about the, their handwriting analysis, because I think okay, I think it's so interesting. As I said in the pre in 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 the introduction, that we tend to see the world in one way. We look yeah. at it. We think what we see is what we see, and and we think that's what the world is. But more and more, and I have to mention it because the show is sponsored by the book over my left shoulder, the mosaic. Mm -hmm. The mosaic is all about the fact that nothing is as it seems. Nothing is as it seems. And so when we see that the way we see the world is exactly that, the way we see the world, but not the way the world is, yeah. we slide ourselves out of the way and look at the world, we might see the world the way it is a little bit better. And what I love about what you do is you take something that everybody looks at every single day, although now with hyper, with computers, maybe less so, but we still handwrite. And you take, we take a look at something we do every single day and we see things in it that most people don't see. Can you talk a little yeah, bit about right. that? Definitely. So the venture that you talked about, uh, my venture is basically on graphology. And now what is graphology is that we as graphologists study all the graphic movements that you make while writing. So it's said that the tone we speak and the gestures we make, our body language speak a lot about our subconscious. And in the same way, the handwriting and the signatures we make is also something which depict our subconscious and copy it exactly on the paper. But to an immature eye, it could be something which is written and even it could be bad handwriting or neat handwriting. It could be untidy as well at times. But to a trained expert, there are so little intricacies that they look at that is very important. And that is enough for us to look at a person's personality as a whole. So the curves that you make, the formations that you do, even the slight dot on the letter I speak a lot about your personality. And as you said that not many people are writing these days because we are in a culture where typing is more, we are always on our phones or on the laptops. But uh, one thing that you missed out is it's not about the handwriting only. Oh. So we as graphologists also study the signature as well. And signature is definitely a part of our lives, which we cannot miss. So be it signing an official document or you know, doing anything, you just sign, even the celebrities, even if you could not see their official documents, what you can see is their autographs. Yeah. And that is why that reveals entirely a lot about their personality. And that is what we study. And oh. not only that, 
if you look at a child's handwriting or you if you go back to your times when you used to sit on the phone calls uh you know filling your diaries with certain doodles even those doodles can reveal a lot about your personality wow and when you combine all these aspects it is what we study and give a personality profile to people so it's important because we as individuals neglect the fact that even though we all were taught in the same school in the same class or by the same teacher all of the students handwriting differed and that was their unique identification Beautiful. and same is the fact with the personality because each individual's personality is different the way their handwriting is different and that is why even a study was done in which it was stated that the two handwritings being exactly similar has a chance of 1 in 68 trillion wow. that is huge and that is why your handwriting is as unique as your fingerprints so let's put that in perspective there are 8 billion people in the world and to find someone with exactly your handwriting is 1 in 680 trillion is that what you said yeah 68 so, trillion 68 trillion 68 trillion So that's yeah. a lot more than the amount of people that you, we'd have to multiply about uh I'm going to guess about uh blah, 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 seven or and a half eight times for us to no that's trillion not billion. So it's a lot. It's it's your handwriting clearly says what you do. When I was younger, I studied it a little bit. Um okay. Somewhere along the line in school, I went from a cursive handwriting to a print to printing okay. my letters and writing and writing everything is printing can you mm-hmm. still determine through printing what you can determine through cursive so there is a unique fact about the people who write in printed letters so they are the people who actually do not want to reveal completely their personality as to who they are to the others around them oh. and that is why they form printed letters and that is a major contrast which i find and all the graphologists would find that there is a distinction between those who write with printed letters and those who do it in a cursive way so we will find people who write in printed letters not revealing too much about themselves to the others around them huh. so there will be some part of their personality that will be hidden and that will be close to them only wow So and all this time I thought I was doing it because I was left-handed and when I did cursive I smeared the paper more than you a right-handed you just went you know and it didn't but and printing it could it was more in control that way it wasn't as big of yeah. a Anyway very very interesting if someone were wanting to get in touch with you to do their handwriting can can they can they take a picture with their camera with their phone of a Yes yes of, and right in they can send it to you yeah definitely so these days uh, there are live sessions as well but because this time during the pandemic live sessions could not happen that's why i'm doing online analysis as well so all you need to do is to just contact me of course and there are certain lines that are specifically asked to write because those are the lines which cover all the 26 alphabets and okay. once you write those lines thrice or maybe uh three or four times that's enough on a plain sheet specifically so uh you you just have to send that picture to me and you'll get a detailed report of about four to five pages of your entire handwriting wow wow fabulous so already i can see people going okay how do i get her address it's going to be in the show notes folks so everything is going to be there you can get in touch with amia and i'm sure your prices are on are your prices Like what is that service run basically or are they on your website so that people can find out? Yeah, so I just launched my website recently uh two weeks back that was uh ecrivongraphology.com. So the name of the venture is ecrivon which is a French word that means let's write. And our message is you write we discover. So it's really simple to understand you just have to send your handwriting sample and you will get a lot of things to know about your personality and not just that there are specific sector specific services as well so if you talk about the schools in schools it could actually generate a report of the personality catering to a lot of areas so your cognitive abilities 
your social, your behavioral and emotional abilities of a child. So just like you get the uh, report card in the school, you'll get a personality report card of the child. Fabulous. And that's why I'm trying to connect with a lot of schools all over so that they can actually utilize this time and the parents and the te teachers can get the analysis of their students time. These it. services can also be extended to the corporate world as well. So when we talk about selecting a specific employee that, you know, is eligible according to their personality, we look at their CV, we call them for the personal interviews, but there is a lot of things that their handwriting can reveal about their personality. And that is studied and therefore a report is given as to which candidate should be selected and which matches the personality traits you're looking for. Love it. I, I think it's a lost art and one that we need to bring back. So I'm so happy you're here. So let's go back now to you. What makes you happy? Um, doing something which I like makes me happy. So it could differ from day to day. So if I have some tasks, on hand, which are, which actually I like, which uh, involves a lot of creativity in them or something which, in which I can write and express my views and opinions or something which will interest me a lot and that, that will keep me happy. But doing things that I uh, actually don't like doing or just doing it because of a burden or force is something I really hate. Okay, very honest, good. If if money weren't important to you, what would you be doing? Um, I would be traveling. So yeah, if money wouldn't have been really important, I would definitely be traveling, meeting people, looking at the different cultures they are in. How do they actually live in their ordinary lives? So in the world of social medias, we are actually facing a lot of uh, issues in this aspect that we are not able to know how the culture in our country is built, how the ordinary man or the ordinary person is living at the deep root level. So we are th seeing things at a very superficial level, whatever is being shown through us, through the filters and the social media and through what actually the happy and the positive aspect of the life people want to show. But what we miss out behind those screens is the actual and the in-depth life of the people. Love that. Love that. All right, let's go into a lightning round. By the way, I suck at lightning rounds. I'm not good at it. But the idea is I ask you a question, we go pretty quickly through it. I, I'm the worst at it because I always want, I'm too curious to stay with it. But the first ones are sort of easy. So are you look like the rapid fire, right? Yes. Are you a dog or a cat person? Uh, dog. Do you like coffee or tea? Coffee. Would you say you're a conser more conservative in the way you live life or more liberal in the way you think about life? Oh, I didn't get the second one. Uh, more, are you more conservative in the way you live life or are you more liberal in the way you live liberal, life? Liberal, liberal. Liberal. Yeah. You are liberal? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you feel like you fit into the world or have you always felt a little different? Uh fit into the world you feel like you fit in yeah wow i love that i i in the research that i'm doing probably 95 percent of the people say they feel different so i love when you when someone fits in because i always expected that's what i would hear so i love that what are you most scared of uh lizards <laughs> yeah lizards wow okay yeah. wow and what are you most excited about? Uh, I'm excited about traveling to different countries, of course. So that's one of the basic things in my bucket list that I, have tra I like to travel to different countries. Yeah. And that's the thing I'm most excited about. What are you most hopeful about? Uh, I'm hopeful about that the venture that I have started will someday become really successful and I could actually make my family and parents proud of me. Wow. Well, we're going to help you do that because I think it'll, it has uh, tremendous potential to be successful. 
So. Yeah, so I think that the mentoring that I have with people, the way I talk to people, and the insights that I get from them, attending a lot of webinars and workshops, and actually having some me- personal mentoring sessions, can actually help me work more on this dream and to polish it more so that I can actually achieve what I aim to. Yeah, I think it's right there in front of you. So all you have to do is walk into it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Would you say you're a giver or a receiver? Uh, definitely a giver. Okay. So let me barrel down into that. Because one of the things that I found, and it doesn't have to be true for you. So if it's not true for you, tell me it's just not true. One of the things that I found is givers, it's so beautiful to meet people who are givers. And so many people are givers. And they give and yeah. they give and they give. But so often those same givers have a little bit of a problem receiving. They're way better at giving to people than they are at receiving from people. Is that true for you? Uh, yeah, at many situations, it is true. Because as a giver, our expectations rise so much from the other people that we expect them to give at least the similar on the similar lines as to what we have given them but it's not always with the people so just as you said there are people who are givers and there are people who receivers so not everyone we give to is a giver in turn and that is why uh, that clash or that difference comes in because you cannot expect that person or uh, that situation to give you as to how much you have put in efforts or given yourself to it okay and i understand that 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 people are not uh, people don't give in the same way that everybody else gives. I understand that. And I believe that some people are takers, not even receivers. But yeah. how are you when people are giving to you in the way that you want people to give to you? Are you able to be vulnerable enough and open enough to accept what they're giving to you? So it's something that we learn through ages. Maybe five or six years back, I may not be a person who was ready to openly accept what people are giving. But with the time and with a lot of lessons we learn through this course of time, we actually learn to accept that every individual has their different potentials to give and the different ways in which they are giving you something. So I have become open to what people are giving, the way they are giving. And it depends upon them, their nature and their individual personality. So just we say that each individual is different. Their giving capacities are also uh, different. And that is why it's important that we do not try to match our expectations to them. And that is what is important when you are accepting something from the person who is giving you. So may I ask you a favor? Yeah. I would like to see if for the rest of our conversation, your, your mind is brilliant, by the way. And your heart is so big and you are a teacher at the essence, at the, at the essence of who you are. You are a teacher who communicates information beautifully. Thank you. What I would like to ask you for the rest of this conversation is not about what we need to do, but about you personally. In other words, when I ask you, I want to get to know you. So I want you to come out from behind that teacher role that gives over information to the people. And I want you to just, and if you can't, if you don't want to do it, you can just say, hey, that's, that's not what I, I don't feel comfortable doing that with you. No, I don't know you well That's enough. absolutely fine, yeah. Okay, so do you understand the shift that I'm asking you to go? Yeah, definitely. So rather than telling what people should do, I have to tell what I do actually in that situation. Or what troubles you in what you do, or what's great okay. about that, or whatever it is, okay? Um, okay. Do you come from your head or your heart? Heart. Okay. So for people who come from their heart, what I found in the work that I do, again, this is just a lob over the net to set up a question. It doesn't mean that you have, you have this is true to you. But I find that people that come from the heart are often hurt quite a bit because they give their heart out there and people don't know how to deal with someone who has yeah. such a big, beautiful heart. Yes. Is that true for you? Uh, so it becomes true in certain situations when we have put a lot of heart into it. 
because it generally happens the other person is not able to understand what you have done for them because it's something that you have done out of your heart and you know when so ever i do things up. yeah we're going back in the teacher uh, <laughs> i want to slide the teacher over to the right if you let me okay you can stay in teacher if you want but I think there's a shift that can happen here that is really beautiful. That is actually, yeah. more, that is more, um, that'll be more real because I know you're a great teacher. I already know that. And I'm going to, I would love to learn from you many things, but I'm asking you, have you, has your heart been hurt? So I don't yeah. care what other people do. I don't care what other things are happening. You understand the difference? I understand. Yeah. So, has your heart been hurt? Yes. Yes. And so in the situations where your heart is hurt, what I find a lot of people do is they allow themselves to be hurt a little bit, but then after a while they start to put up walls around themselves to protect themselves from being hurt. There's no, I mean, who wouldn't do that? It makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. What are some of the walls you've put up to protect yourself from being hurt? Uh, it's just that I have started using my logics and practicalities more than using my heart in those situations where I feel that there are chances of being hurt again. And that is where the balance of heart and head comes into picture. Gotcha. I have to tell you, when I asked you if you're in your head more or your heart more, I loved your answer, but I didn't feel it from our conversation. Do you feel our conversation is from your heart now or from your head? Has been from your head or your heart? Um, see, since I am meeting you for the first time, it is going to be more from my head okay. than from my heart. But over the time, if I'm talking to a person who I've been knowing since so long or from a lot of years, maybe my friends or family, that conversation might shift to more of my heart rather than head love it why take so why take so much time to make that shift why why do you have to know somebody for a long time to go into your heart i mean what is oh. it that you have to see to move from the protection of your head to the protection of your heart and can you feel yourself shifting right now as we're talking yeah I mean, do you feel it? Like I see it in your body. I see it in your face. I see it in the way you're, I feel your heart opening. Do you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I 100% get that there are people that we can't trust. And you want to stay protected. But when you feel that there's somebody in front of you you can trust, why take longer than you need to take in order to come to your heart? Because uh, there might, there is a fear of mistrust that might happen. Also, uh, you need to have that level of rapport build with the person before actually trusting that person a lot. And that rapport formation is very important, I feel. And that is why it takes a lot of time to shift from that head to hard time. So what if I said I didn't believe that? Not that I don't believe it for you, but I don't believe it for me. Do you feel that I've been talking to you from my head or my heart? Uh, I genuinely feel that you have been talking through your heart. And okay. actually, I could feel that. Okay. Yeah. I love that. So, did it, do I know you any longer than you know me? Uh, see, you have been asking questions and therefore you know me more. But okay. I could definitely say that the rapport you have tried to build in, the level of comfort in this room is amazing. And that is why I know that aspect of you as a person for sure. Okay. I love that. And you're right. I'm driving the questions. I'm asking the questions so I can ask for my heart. Maybe should we, is there anything you want to know about me? Cause I'd like to change the conversation so that this belief system that you have, if we have to know somebody a fair amount of time to get to know them before we can trust them to open up our heart. I want to see if we can shift that. And I want to see if I'm capable of doing it with you because I don't know you at all. Ask me something that you want to know that is not easy to talk about. Okay. Uh, so, uh, see, you are a lot elder to me and I am a bit younger who is trying to experience and explore the life. So how do you think the, 
what do you think life actually teaches you over the course of years and what do you think is the best phase of your life so is it that teenage year or the early adulthood or the age when you actually start settling or when you have achieved a lot in your life and now you're trying to settle down yes i think every one of those places is the best moment of your life because every single one of them when i was young i believed that i could do anything i was invincible i would i would take risks i didn't know what it was like to fail i had no perception of it i just went out and i did when i was young i i had my my parents passed away when i was a kid and so i got really hurt from that and i moved in with an aunt and uncle who were very wealthy and they invested the small inheritance that my parents gave me and made it into a larger inheritance that if i would have just done nothing with it i would have been multi 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 millionaire okay but i believed that i had the ability to make the world happen anytime i wanted to i was young and reckless and and sort of naive and innocent and so i saw someone sitting on a street corner who had no arms and no legs and i watched people and i just sat at I, I sat by a building and just watched people walk by him and he was asking for money and nobody was giving him anything and i thought if you're not giving this man some this person's money how in the who do you give money to i mean he's clearly not going to go out and get alcohol and this guy needs money to live so i wa- i walked away i went to the bank and i came back and i gave him $5000 in his little cup amazing um and that isn't just to tell a story about how good i am it just was what i ended up doing with everything that i had is i just gave my money away to people that needed it more than i did yeah have i looked back on that from time to time and said what an idiot you could have had millions of dollars to give to the world in a much bigger way yes yeah, sometimes i did but there's also many many times that i said when you help an individual you help the whole world and it was good for me to be able to do that And so those moments of learning are amazing moments of learning. The Buddhists have a great saying. They say the the Zen mind is the beginner's mind. It's the mind that when you do something for the millionth time, it's as if you never ever did it before. It's like you did it you're doing it for the first time now. So at every age in my life I believe that I've practiced the Zen mind approach to it and I've seen the glory like to me I'm 65 now. and i see the beauty of all of the wisdom that has come all of the pain that has come through the life that i've lived all the mistakes that i've made all the joys that i've had all the love that i've experienced all the feelings that i've known and that fills up every vibration of every word that i say to people now and people most times can feel it when i was young i didn't know that place but when i was young i knew other places i was fearless i was i was strong i was powerful i create i wanted to create something in the world and i did And so every place has its moment. Do you feel I was still in my heart when I spoke to you there? Yeah. Okay. What I want what I want I wanted to share something with you. Yes. What the mosaic taught me is that our thoughts become our words. Our words create our stories and our stories become our life. And so what we think will be what we say will be the stories we create and the, the life that we live. If yes. we believe that it takes a long time for us to open up to people because we have to build a rapport with them and we have to we can't come from our heart because we want to be in our head we we need to make that well we may miss out on on so many opportunities to just love and be loved right there waiting for us. Right. That same thing will happen in the business. If you believe that it takes a lot of time for you're too young, that it takes too long, people you have to be older, you have to know more than you do. BS, you don't have to know any more. You know plenty. You have you have the enthusiasm of discovering this graphology that is so beautiful and so and so alive and so passionate with your with your with your dream for it. The, yeah. the mistakes you make will be nothing compared to the passion that you bring to people through the understanding of how they can see another part of their life by looking at the way they write yes but it's the stories we tell that keep us sidelined i would like to invite you my dear friend with a heart as big as you can ever imagine 
to come from that place. Look at that. Look what happened to you when I just said that and acknowledge that in you. And you know that's true because your smile showed me you knew it. You know it's true. Yes. Right? Yeah. I would have liked to invite you to live that place gloriously without this thought that it takes time to do that. Yeah. I told you I suck at lightning rounds, right? I, I, I told you I'm not very good at rapid fire answers and questions, right? No, but definitely I've learned this. Uh, and I think it's going to help me a lot because uh, you're very true to this fact that if I take a lot of time trusting people or maybe forming that or building that rapport, uh, that opportunity will be lost for sure because that person is not going to come again. And that is why it's important to have an immediate reaction and feel that connect to the people immediately so that you can actually make them feel and trust yourself that whatever you are doing is something which is for their benefit only. It's happening from you without you knowing it. So yeah. you might as well just get in alignment with it. Yeah. As opposed to sort of gas break, gas break, gas break. Your natural temperament is to, is to bring people into your heart. But then you, yes. you've created a story in your head that I need to be in my head and I, and I need to protect myself through my head. My, you know, my, an old man's thoughts on conversation. You, you see things in the words people write. I see things in, in the way people express themselves and, and the vibration that they have in a conversation. Yes. Same, same sort of skill. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, do you believe people are more similar than they are different or more different than they are similar? Uh, they're more different than they're similar. For sure, because wow. each individual is different. Yeah. Wow. So let me dive into that a little because I believe almost exactly the opposite. I believe on the yes. periphery, we are very different. You're this beautiful woman in India. I'm this old guy in California. Your, your skin is, is a, a beautiful shade of brown. My skin is a beautiful shade of white. Uh, I am, you know, I was Jewish, born Jewish. You were probably born either Hindi or, or Hindi, Hindu, right? Is yeah, Hindi. Hindu. Yeah. On your, you live thousands and thousands of miles away from me. There's no reason in the world we should be having a conversation together based on yeah. the outside differences of what we have. And yet here we are. And as soon as we burrow down underneath those outside peripheral differences, we all want the same thing. We want to be loved and accepted. We want to be yeah. to and heard. We want to be acknowledged and validated. And we all just want to be seen for who we are, not just because you're a beautiful woman or an, I'm an old wise man. That's not how we want to be seen. We want to be seen because of who we are. Right. And we can't see you unless you show me your heart. See what I'm saying? So probably that the mindset that I have that people are different is because what we have been taught over the years, that we look at people differently based on their culture, their religion, the place they come from, education background, and a lot many things that make them different. But yes, yeah. you're right that internally they are one. They are one. So we yeah. all are human beings and that is enough to make us similar. I just wrote a really interesting Facebook post and it came to me while I was meditating this morning. Is why do people who say they love God find so much fault in God's creations? God created people of all different colors. God created people of all different religions. God created people of all different nationalities. God created people of all different financial means. God created people of all different difference whatever different had sex yeah so how is it possible that we can love our creator and hate his creation and there's so much going on with the women standing up for their rights to be seen and, and black and brown people standing up for their rights to be seen and and white people looking taking an honest look at the way we've lived our lives and say what an abysmal life we've lived and everybody wants to be us why it's 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 a, I, I just think it's time to get the, the differences of the superficial and go into the place where we are really the same. 
Yeah. But that differences uh, were not created by God. They are the differences that we as human beings have created. Yeah. And that's why I said initially that this pandemic that the entire world is going through is has made us realize that the most powerful thing is the nature only. Yes. So whether you are brown, black, white, or be of any religion or gender or caste, you all are on the same line today. Love it. Love it. Would you say you're a leader or a follower? A uh, leader. So let me dive into that if I can. Okay. I don't know if it's true in India because I'm not as well versed as I am in the politics of what's happening in America. But what I see in America is at least in politically, I mean, it happens everywhere. It happens in education. It happens in business. It happens everywhere yeah. is yeah. that, but in, in politics, we elect our leaders and we expect them to be leaders. But what we find in a very short period of time is our leaders are too scared to lead within the silo of the group that they're in. So yeah. they don't have the courage to stand up and it doesn't matter what party they're a part of. They don't have a, the courage to say, wow, we're doing this amazingly well, but this really sucks. We're, I mean, this isn't good at all what we're doing and you can't act that way to people or you can't constantly be you know, fighting with everybody or you can't do whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter Democrat or Republican. And I wonder what, and then I wondered in this room, I was talking to somebody and they said to me, well, how about you? How are you as, how are you as a leader? And I said, I would think that I'm a good leader. And yet when I look at it, when I look at myself, I'm very content with who I am as a human being. But there are some little places where I would love to make adjustments in, in, how, I, in how I am. Maybe I'll see that. Maybe I'll get that through handwriting. I'll, I'll, I'll write out. So. Um, but what I find is the momentum of my actions, of the way I've been, even when I make a decision to be different, the momentum just carries me back into the momentum. And I don't have the, the courage or the strength to stand up to that momentum. And, and over and over and over, I have to do it to build the momentum in the other direction. And then I said, no wonder we elect leaders that don't have the courage to stand up to the momentum of the group think of the silo that they're in. Because we're all like that. What are your thoughts on that? So, um, it could be because there are differences in the political system in your country and in our country. Yes, and that uh, is why we have been taught to look and it's a very famous saying that we say in India that people are more of followers than leaders because we fail to put it up in the education system we have. It's important that we focus more on building leaders rather than followers because there's so much of power and politics difference that we see. Yeah. There's a lot of rich and poor difference that we see that make us follow that culture only of being the follower of something who's more powerful than us, of something who holds a higher position than us, or maybe who's just richer than us. And that's what has to be removed or eradicated since the beginning of the education system. Yeah. And I personally feel that it could only be inculcated if we bring the change in ourselves. So if today I think that I am not going to follow somebody who is just uh, at a higher political position than me, uh, and I could lead a small group of people more efficiently, then I'll be more than happy to call myself a leader than to be called a follower of that political organization. I love that. Amir, you give me hope in the next generation. I like that. I hope people are thinking like that because that I love that, what you just said. Thank you so much. <laughs> So I know both just thinking that we have been formed or I should say, and since today we celebrated the teachers day, it's something our teachers have taught us or probably the something which my teachers have taught us over the taught me over the years that has built that confidence and the leader in me. Yes. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Stay, stay that way, stay that way. And, and, uh, and and walk in the truth of leadership, walk in the heart of leadership. Yes. 
what's more important for you in this moment? Is it more important for you to be able to stand up and have your voice heard, to talk about what you're doing with your work that you're doing, to share that with people? Or is it more important for you to create a platform for other people to be heard and listened to as well? Uh, right now, since I am a beginner, it's important for me to uh, have a platform where I can be heard, where people get to know me, what am I doing and what services I can offer or what is there that I have learned over the years to provide them in the form of a service. And rather than just providing a platform where people can come in and put in their opinions, because uh, I am no, no one right now to actually judge people's opinions or, uh, you know, it's important for me as, as a person to grow as a person who is in her, t uh, in her early adulthood to actually come up and show up in the world and uh, let the people know what I feel and let them hear that there is something I want to express and there is something, there are opinions that even I want to put forward. Yes. I love that. So here it is. You have two minutes. Take this time and share with the world what it is you want to say. Okay. So uh, these two minutes seems like the most powerful two minutes that I have because I can share all that I want to. And me as a person is somebody who will like to give people. And that is why I came up with this venture. And that invoked my curiosity in handwriting, analysis, graphotherapy, and graphology. So when we talk about a lot of things that are happening around us, there is so much stress the mental uh, traumas that people are going through, their anxiety that is flowing through. The graphotherapy uh, comes up as something which is really easy and simple, but all it requires is consistency and dedication. And that is why I took up as my major aim or venture and tried it to transform into a business model that could reach out to more and more people and people can actually benefit from it because there is not much awareness that is there about it and handwriting and signature analysis is something which can actually reveal a lot about your personality. All that you need to do is to know what it has to offer you. And so this platform, I think that you have provided me an amazing opportunity to first of all talk to you. So I really felt that I was talking to a person who could actually have a listening capacity, who has a power to calmly and comfortably listen to what the other person's opinion is. And also, Thanks a lot for putting up so amazing questions that helped me to actually go deep into my soul and mind and think that actually what I am saying is, am I a person like that or not? Or is there something which is different? And over the course of this entire time, I actually felt that transformation from being little on the periphery to going deep into the conversations that I had. Love that. Love that. Thank you for acknowledging that. Um, I think you have a huge work to do, a huge work to do. And I think uh, if there's a way I can help you in any way to do that, I would, be, I would love to help you. Because I Thank think you. there is a gentle, innocent truth to what's going on. Yes. Um, and I think that when you have a short period of time, let me just give you a little tip from the years that I've been in business, you can take it or leave it. Definitely. Um, yeah. What you want to capitalize on is where people's pain is and where you can help them. Yes. And so you want to, you want to speak right to their pain. Are you confused about how you're living your life? Handwriting can help you see clearer. Yeah. Are you not getting along with people that you should, that you know you can get along with? Handwriting can show you why you're not doing that. Are you not showing up full capacity like you know you can in your workplace or in your school or in your, in, in your family? Guess what? Your handwrite, handwriting can tell you why and can help you to change that behavior. Yes. That's why I'm so committed to handwriting. That's why I'm so committed to this art of graphology or, or whatever it's called. I think you said graphology. Yeah, and, graphology and, yeah. and that's why... I just want to be able to be with you 
and show you what you are telling everybody about yourself without even knowing it. And I want you to tell yourself what you're telling. I want you to see for yourself what you're saying and see if it's what you really want to say. And you can just change a little thing. If you dot your eye over the eye instead of in front of the eye, you're going to calm down. You're not going to be so far ahead of life that you miss a lot of things that are going on. If you dot your eye, not in back of the eye, but in front of the eye, you'll be living in the past less. You'll be, you'll be here right in the present. So try as a practice, dot your eye over the eye. Just see what that does for you and see if you can do it. Because in order to change that one motion, you have to change the consciousness that makes that motion happen. Yes, definitely. Um, we're going to have all of your information in the show notes. I want to thank you for coming, but tell people your website once more so that they can get in touch with you too. Yeah. So my website's name is ekrivongraphology.com. And you can reach out to me, look out for the services that we offer, the sessions, the workshops, and the webinars. And I feel that you can actually benefit from it because it is something which goes deep into your subconscious and we all need it to improve our personality. Totally. I know I'm going to reach out to you and have it done. And I know my wife wanted to do it before I even had you here. So I want to thank you so much, Amya, for coming. I want to tell you what a pleasure, pleasure. it is to get to know it you. It was my pleasure to be here. I want to know from across the scan of thousands of miles, I felt you right here with me. And I, I want to thank you for the courage also that you showed in going back into your heart again. Your heart is beautiful. Thank you I hope so that you continue to give from that place all the time so that people yes, can feel definitely. you as much as I did. For yeah. those of you who are watching the show, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, First of all, if you like what if you if you like what you heard, contact Anya. She's building her business. And what would be better if strangers watching two strangers meet, suddenly engage strangers in the workplace of helping each other and do learn more about themselves and grow what it is they're doing? A fabulous thing that could happen. Um, and also, if you like the show, the way things grow is if you like something, share it with people you like who haven't had experienced it. So when you like something and share it with people you like, that helps things to grow. So reach out and do that. And then the last thing I want to say to all of you is the challenge that I always make. Whether it's virtual or in, or, or in real time. Go up to someone you don't know. And just ask them how you're doing. Start a conversation with them. And listen more than you speak. Yeah. Because in a world where people are strange... We live, it creates a strange world. But in a world where people are friends, it creates a friendly world. And more than ever, we need to be in a friendly world right now. The world is crying out for us to be friendly, friendlier. And we can do it by just engaging one person in a conversation. Try it. Thank you all for coming. Anya, um, yeah, is there one last thing you want to say before we go? Uh, I just want to say that thank you for calling me here. It was so inspiring talking to you. And even I have become more encouraged and motivated to work even harder for the community and to bring about aspects and to put up my heart into what I am doing. Thanks a lot for this experience. My honor. It's a treat to get to know you. People, contact Amya. Do it. Get, get to know yourself better by through the process. Thank you so much for being here. And until the next stranger shows up, be kind to each other. Befriend each other. And don't be strangers. The world's a much better place when we're not strangers. Be friends with each other, okay? Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Ciao. Thank you so much. Thank you.